Dzień dobry. Emil. Hello. Hello. Hi. Sorry for the late. All right. We're just sorting out various technical things. Martin. Yes. Uh, translate here. Switch to English. Here we go. And you should be able to hear me right now instead of people speaking in Polish. One, two, one, two, interpreter trial. Yeah, it seems to work. Okay. <laughs> right. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, Camille, we cannot see you. There's a rather nice picture of you. Um, you but, cannot see oh, me. there we go. No, I, no, 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 no. I'm sorry to Camille. Martin, we can uh, see you fine. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so uh, I think everyone is here now. Unless uh, everyone here from your side, uh, Camille? Yeah. Let me check. We have Mr. Nogajczyk, Mr. Norbay, Nogajczyk, the treasurer, uh, the lady from the lady from the housing department. No, we have everyone. We have everyone. Okay, fine. Okay, then um, let us start. Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for coming. This is a workshop uh, under the office of the European Investment Bank with the city of Valjish, organized by me from LSE and our partner Majik from the Institute um, of Region, Urban Regional Development. I'm grateful to you all for coming this morning. Uh, Greg um, Piatkowski and Paulina Piatkowski are our translators today, so some of you have met them before. I think everyone is now clear how to listen in Polish or English, but if not, indicators than we know. Okay, we've sent out several documents in advance, which I hope you've all seen, uh, and thank you all for them. The structure of the meeting is that um, Valjish will present at the start and set out the issues about a housing agency uh, in Valjish, uh, sitting alongside their current agency, which Christoph from in Valjish already runs. After that, Martin and Anna. Uh, Martin is from the Chemnitz Housing Agency and leads the Altbau network of Urbach. And Anna is from the city of Rubnik and uh, has been implementing the housing agency program there. They will present after that. Um, so we about 10 minutes from Valjic and about 20 minutes from Anna and Martin. I will keep an eye on the time, but I'll not be too strict, but I'll keep an eye on the time. And then there'll be discussion for the rest of the meeting where I hope you can exchange and ask questions and drill things out. So that, that's the format. Uh, this uh, meeting is being recorded, um, just so you're aware, and the recording will be made available to everyone um, uh, when the report comes out, it will be made available to the EIB as well. So watch what you say about the EIB um, or anybody else. Okay, um, we've sent out Zoom instructions. So if anyone wants to send me a message, you can go to chat. Um, if you want to speak, you can go to participants and raise your hand. There's a little blue hand you can raise and I will try and bring you in or if you feel compelled to just switch yourself on, because I'd like you all to remain muted throughout if possible. Okay, that's enough um, from me. So let's start. So Camille, uh, is, is it, um, I'm not sure quite who's presenting on your behalf. Is it Casper who's doing it? So if you could share your screen and let's get going.
to ja zacznę i zaraz przekażę głos. I will start and I will then uh, give the floor to uh, Mr. Kacper, Kacper Nogajczyk, uh, the CEO of MZB, Municipal Building Management Company, that is responsible on behalf of the city, uh, that is responsible for managing the building stock in Wałbrzych. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Kamil Orpel and I'm a head of the uh, department that is, among other things, report responsible for uh, ownership uh, of um, uh, or managing the city owned companies and of course also strategic management and economic de development of the city of Wałbrzych. I'm very happy that thanks to the support of London School of Economics we were able to meet here in such a great group. I have to admit that uh, I read uh, a couple of years ago, I think it was two years ago, I read about uh, uh, the project in, Chem in Chemnitz uh, that uh, operated within the Urbex network, and uh, I really, really liked it, uh, the project, I mean, um, because I think we're dealing with the similar problems here in Wałbrzych that you had to deal with, you had to solve. Uh, the uh, Mr. Nogajczyk will tell you about the details, but to give you the scope, there is a lot of uh, derelict buildings built pre-1945. The city, as an owner, we are uh, managing uh, quite a big stock, 25% of all uh, housing uh, in the city uh, belongs, to the, uh, belongs to the city, to the municipality. Uh, the other um, are mostly owned by the housing cooperatives, so a cooperative of the residents of a particular building or a group of buildings. Uh, about 10% are owned by the, uh, by, by, by the bigger um, housing companies. Uh, Wałbrzych is divided in two parts, I have to say. Northern, uh, a newer one, uh, where a lot of housing estates is located, built mostly in the 60s, and the older part, southern part, where a lot of these older derelict tenement houses is located. The uh, requirements, uh, financial requirements, would amount to, let's say, 20 to 30 years of uh, housing, of, of savings that the city could accumulate. accumulate. Uh, per year. Uh, of course, the city is not able to accumulate such uh, money, also uh, not uh, spend so much money in one time. So that's why we're looking for a long-term project and for an external investor that will help us to rebuild this uh, housing stock. And of course, uh, also, we feel that the housing market, compared to other comparable cities, is uh, really poor, to say, so to say. Uh, but Again, that will be mentioned uh, Mr. Krzysztof, uh, by Mr. Krzysztof Urbański, uh, CEO of the company, responsible for attracting investors and selling city-owned property. So that's it in terms of introduction. Mr. Nogajczyk, over to you. Welcome, everyone. Unfortunately, I can't share the screen with the presentation, some technical issues. Oh, oh no, hang on, wait, wait. Uh, I think that's so my fault. Okay, you should be able to do it now, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Good. As it was mentioned uh, by Mr. Orpel, the um, municipal housing in the in Wałbrzych is uh, over almost 20% of, uh, uh, of, of, of the total housing. Uh, so the, the rest would be owned by some housing cooperatives and the, um, and, and, and the private owners, private investors. The biggest problems we're dealing with are related to the state of these buildings, especially those built before 1945. Most of the buildings is over 100 years old. Uh, of, of these buildings is 100 years old uh, under the supervision of the um, monument conservator uh, either 
direct supervision or they are in general in the area uh, that is under the conservator's supervision. So we can't, as with other buildings, uh, that if we if they are too old to demolish, uh, then we just sorry to to destroy it. We just demolish them then. Uh, so we can't do that in this case. So what are the bigger problems? Uh, lack of toilets uh, and bathrooms. Uh, systematically, we're trying to renovate 100 flats a year and introduce uh, toilets and bathrooms in them, if it's possible, if the network, let's say, uh, sewage network allows that. But still, as you can see in total, it's, almost 11, it's over 11,000 of flats that lack either a toilet or a bathroom. So if you divide it by 100 flats a year, it will take dozens of years to fix completely. So in order to accelerate it, we need some financing. But I will talk about it later on. The municipal resources are um, depleting. That is why an external investor um, was called um, to action. Uh, external investors were called to action. Uh, we also have a program in Wałbrzych so that uh, the potential or prospective owners can renovate uh, the municipal house, uh, municipal flat, municipal property. Uh, of course, before buying that, uh, the uh, person, the individual can can see the flat, and then if they agree, if both parties agree, the house is so the flat is sold and renovated by the new owner. So this goes quite well. Of course, we have a certain way of calculating potential costs uh, and then lowering the rent or, or the fees related to, uh, to, to owning a house uh, for such an owner. We're selling um, the house as well, the, the flats as well, but as you can see, uh, it's only 954 flats, so 8% uh, 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 of, of the flats, uh, which is this, this, this part, this part in the table is also shared with these houses that are uh, the, the flats that are uh, aimed to, to be renovated by the prospective owner I mentioned before. Um, so in the last couple of years, we managed to improve the situation, improve our stock by renovating the municipal uh, buildings, but also uh, by building new uh, housing estates. Uh, uh, we also uh, adapted a couple of uh, old, older buildings, for example, former primary, secondary schools uh, into housing. Uh, we also demolished uh, some parts of these oldest buildings in the poorest technical condition. As you can see, uh, almost uh, over 90 percent were built before 1945, uh, 1945 which shows uh, what kind of uh, property we are usually dealing with so this table shows uh, what i mentioned before uh, as you can see, at tenants, so only expense, renovation approvals, uh, almost 3,000 such approvals were issued in 2018. Uh, usually annually, it's close to 3,000. Uh, we uh, demolish annually uh, from, uh, let's say, 10 to, to, to dozens of buildings. 64 buildings are planned to be demolished in the years 2019, 2023. This is the minimum amount we're planning. Uh, very important information, line number three. Uh, so thanks to the um, funding gained from the ABI, uh, EIB, um, we are right now renovating 16 tenement houses and all other dozens of other buildings that are within the municipal housing stock. Uh, in these tenement houses, we are planning to um, situate around 100 um, 
uh, 100 flats. Uh, this is the uh, this is the cross section you can see. Um, for example, uh, right now we are about to finish. Uh, we are we're conducting finishing works for this uh, newly constructed building or newly renovated building. At the beginning of next year, new inhabitants will probably uh, be uh, start. Will be able to start moving in. Uh, of course, uh, we are trying to also use other ways of sources of financing, for example, the BGK bank, uh, but this kind of financing can be only up to 45%. Uh, percent. Uh, we uh, have to use the um, public tender process uh, for uh, finding contractors for all these works, so we don't know the exact amount of all the, uh, of, of all the investment as not all of the tenders are already finalized and then on the photo here you can see this is one of the former schools that was adapted into uh, municipal housing so the city uh, the city uh, manages these and uh, I, it's it's an interesting uh, idea uh, it's, it's a good way to, uh, to 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 deal with this problem so what are the uh, opportunities and risks uh, one of the biggest uh, is definitely looking for additional funding. Um, so we are also looking into the PPP. Uh, then ad additional, um, uh, sorry, another opportunity is related uh, with thermal insulation and improving the aesthetics of building. Usually the facades, the stairwells are a, a hugely um, well, in disrepair. Um, so we want people not only to live in comfortable house, uh, housing conditions but also uh, to be uh, to be living in nice looking buildings then uh, the next one uh, the next opportunity is replacing the heating uh, we still uh, have uh, to deal with dozens of thousands of flats which have which are um, powered by coal furnaces and in the situation that uh, in the situation of pandemics, replacing these furnaces uh, well is is limited. Of course, people inhabitants are uh, afraid of letting in the uh, construction crews or the uh, furnace replacement crew, heating replacement crews to the uh, to their flats to the buildings. Um, then in the Sobienchin district, we are also demolishing building right now uh, to clear the sites. Usually the demolition site is replaced with some greenery or there is some infield building uh, being created in place of the uh, demolished building. Uh, this happened in a couple of locations uh, in the city already. If you're interested, we can then later on show you the pictures. Uh, risks. Uh, majority of the building is uh, under the conservator monument conservators uh, um, uh, supervision so uh, we already have initial uh, denials of our applications for demolishing certain buildings uh, that of course makes uh, our lives a bit more difficult uh, because we need to renovate such buildings if we're not allowed to demolish them and that uh, costs more then it's point number two, weak secondary real estate markets, and I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, Mr. Urbanski will be able to tell you more about that. Uh, what's more, what's worth uh, emphasizing here, I guess, is that uh, the only developer, housing developer, uh, in Wałbrzych is the municipality. Besides the private markets um, of housing developers, is really poor. Um, maybe a few dozens of, of new um, flats is being built a year um, by private housing developers. So, so com if you compare it, if you consider it uh, that we are living in 100,000 uh, um, uh, inhabitant city this is uh, this is a situation situation that uh, definitely will need to be improved uh, continuing degradation of the municipal buildings we're currently working on improving and changing that situation we have a couple of projects in the pipeline um, hopefully they will be considered properly and positively uh, also uh, one of uh, some of them consider it includes the uh, EIB funding, the EIB funding. 
And then, of course, as a result of all that, uh, we are uh, observing increased resident dissatisfaction uh, that is mainly resulted, uh, uh, connected with uh, the uh, insufficient amount of thermal insulation and renovation works. Of course, uh, there is a matter of uh, security here, um, the matter of, of safety, uh, citizen safety. Uh, any questions, definitely we'll be able to delve in the discussion part. Right. And then, thank you. Can we moving on to, moving on to, to Mr. Urbanski? Excellent. Thank you. And then the request to Krzysztof, yes, to take over the floor. Hello, everyone. Krzysztof Urbański, a CEO of Inwałbrzych Company that was created uh, in November last year. Uh, Kasper, maybe you can, you can still keep sharing the screen. Um, uh, our company was created uh, uh, at the end of 2019 to attract investors to uh, to Wałbrzych, uh, the um, and Wałbrzych city, the city of Wałbrzych has over has 99 shares um, in the uh, company. So we have there are three elements of our activities: uh, promotion, marketing. And uh, we were dealing quite okay, I think, with, with doing that before the uh, pandemics. As it was mentioned uh, yesterday, Wałbrzych uh, has, uh, has been attracting, well, the, the major attraction of Wałbrzych has been the Książ Castle, which attracts over half a million of uh, inhabitants, of tourists, sorry, um, every year. But of course, we not only want the tourists to come, but also permanent citizens. And point number two, uh, cooperation. Um, so uh, we are trying to uh, combine supply and demand. Uh, sorry, this is matching uh, supply and demand, and we conduct a real estate inventory, and we also facilitate any financial procedures uh, that may be um, connected with uh, those. Um, uh, the, the thing that we are different, the, the, the way we differ from this housing agency that is to be created, uh, that we are going to discuss uh, today in Wałbrzych, is that we are not dealing with uh, small, um, smaller investments, smaller projects, like single flats, for example. Uh, our scope um, uh, would, would include, for example, whole building or a bigger, bigger housing estate, uh, bigger commercial areas. This is, this is our main point, point uh, focus uh, point of focus and then the, th the third area in cooperation we are moving from the beginning of, of investment project uh, uh, attracting investors up until the final procedures beginning the uh, sorry facilitating the sales uh, conducting all the um, construction audits and so on all that that is needed to invest in Wałbrzych our cooperation is free of charge sorry our uh, activities are free of charge uh, so it's financed by the city and it's like a one-stop shop idea so um, we want to be uh, a company that facilitates uh, all the areas i think we are well surprisingly speaking but we, we are maybe but we, we are helped by the pandemics because more and more people are interested in Wałbrzych as a smaller um, city than uh, for example Wrocław uh, um, Wałbrzych is greener Wałbrzych is more secure um, so this is this is something this is the competitive advantage that acquire uh, sorry helps us to attract more and more potential investors uh, and uh, I have to say that none of the projects that we have started before the pandemic uh, um, started uh, was cancelled or, or even hampered by uh, the pandemics. Uh, people still want to carry on, um, our investors still want to carry on with the projects, uh, probably even more eagerly uh, because of the uh, mentioned, uh, mentioned activities, um, sorry, mentioned uh, conditions. Um, and uh, the newly, uh, newly created uh, railway line will make uh, getting from Wrocław to Wałbrzych even faster from 50 to 40 minutes. What are the objectives uh, we, we 
we want to we want to introduce implement for first of all uh, increasing the communes the municipalities income from the sale of real estate um, we also facilitating uh, um, facilitating uh, not only not only with housing but also commercial area uh, we also want to as a result of our activities increase in uh, property tax in income uh, to to increase the the funding to to the city and of course the strategic overlying goal would be the reversal of depopulation so um, we want to invest in new uh, property, uh, but also uh, we want to convince, uh, well, we want to uh, attract uh, those uh, who, uh, we want to attract those who uh, move away, not far, but uh, to, to Wrocław, for example, but to the neighboring commons, because more and more people move to the detached houses, for example. And uh, we are also trying to convince these people that, uh, well, paying their tax in Wałbrzych uh, or, or coming back to the, to the, to the borders of the city limits, uh, sorry, to within the city limits, is uh, is going to pay off. Um, if again, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them in the discussion part. Great, uh, thank you very much, uh, um, all of you. So I think at this point, I know there is a last slide um, asking various questions, which I think that's been shared already. So let's move to Martin and Anna. Uh, thank you to you for that excellent presentation. Martin, over to you. Wait, hang on. Uh, uh, Martin, please unmute yourself. Yeah, oh yes, that's it, yeah. You're right, you're right. I'm still not into that whole uh, <laughs> video conferencing. Um, Okay, well, thank you very much uh, for having me. Thank you very much for your interest in our project uh, we have in Chemnitz and also in the network we're having across Europe. Um, yes, uh, I'm just sharing my screen. Let's see. Um, just a short introduction uh, um, of myself. Uh, I'm actually not working for the town itself, but for a private company called VGS, uh, which is a consulting and uh, consulting company and also a partner of many municipalities in our region. Um, we are handling, for example, urban renewal grants um, and other things that's related to urban development in our region. Um, one of the projects that uh, we are working on is called Agentur Stadtwohn Chemnitz. This is a project that dates a little bit back, but we took it over in 2011. Um, and since then, uh, we continually developed it um, to the place where we are today. Um, when I was listening to your uh, introduction today about Wabschich and also what I read before, um, I think there are many similarities. Um, when you look at the picture of this, this one building, I'm sure you're, you know what I'm talking about. Um, when talking about those uh, uh, dilapidating buildings, um, the agency uh, or project um, has the aim really to solve one specific uh, problem that we have in Chemnitz and in Eastern Germany in general, um, with uh, many uh, historic buildings uh, that have fallen into disrepair that are standing empty. Uh, when you look at the whole city context, uh, I think it's, uh, it becomes a little bit, uh, a bit more clear. Um, you've got the city center which has been destroyed in the second world war and has been rebuilt since 1990 um, which has uh, used much of uh, Chemnitz uh, strength and power uh, in terms of uh, urban development and stuff so many of the areas around have fallen more or less into disrepair uh, we've got a huge amount of historic buildings um, so, yeah, just comparable to what we have in, or what you have in Wabschuch, uh, 
42% of our dwellings were built before 1946 uh, and 27% even before 1919. And these are the buildings that we are focusing on, those residential tenement buildings. Um, the problem in the whole thing is that when you look at the chart above, uh, that Chemnitz has lost uh, about a third of its population uh, since 1990 and even in the time before. Martin, we, we can't hear you. Sorry about that, but we, we lost him, I think. I can't hear him. Through the use of urban renewal okay, plans, okay. um, has demolished 19,000 dwellings, uh, but still about 22,000 dwellings in Chemnitz are still empty, um, which shows the problem that we're having. Um, we also have a very large municipal housing stock, 18% in Chemnitz. What's a bit different uh, in Babschir, I think, is that uh, we've got a high proportion of, uh, of rental uh, dwellings that most people do not own their houses or their flats, uh, but that they rent it. Yes, um, so this is the context where we started to work in. Uh, on the uh, city level. Another thing is uh, more on the, um, on the procedural level that you've got a lot of different stakeholders that are working on the field. Um, of course, in the city, you've got the different departments on building control, you've got conservation, you've got city planning, and you also got uh, the public housing company um, that are having their own stake in the whole process of developing or revitalizing or dealing with those buildings. Um, then, of course, you've got the owners, which is a very diverse group of what we have here in Chemnitz. Um, you've got people who are interested or potentially interested uh, in the buildings to buy them, to invest, to uh, uh, projects in them. Um, and then you've got uh, a group of experts and civil society and, and people who, who've got their own ideas on how things should develop. Um, and the problem is that these different groups are very disconnected from each other. There is not, uh, not much cooperation in that. Uh, also to look on the very specific uh, issue of certain buildings. And so Agentur Stadtwohn in Chemnitz is right in the middle of that, um, creating a coordination hub, or I like the, uh, the term you used before about in Wabschir, uh, the one-stop shop. Uh, it's really a place where all the different informations connect um, and yeah, uh, come together. We call it a coordination hub. Um, yeah, so um, we are actually uh, connected directly to the city planning department, uh, which, uh, is the, uh, which is the department that's responsible also for our work, which is also um, monitoring on what we're doing. Um, yeah, as we, uh, uh, yeah, just like in Walpschich, we are uh, co fully funded uh, by the city of Chemnitz to do our task and the task is free. Uh, for the uh, for the people. Uh, Mar again, we lost you. Yeah, Martin, Martin, you're you. We can't hear you. You've suddenly cut out your microphone. Um, there, you're back now. Okay. And yeah, uh, yeah. So. Uh, so we already have uh, only have a limited scope of what we can do. Of course, we can offer support and, and, and different things, and uh, uh, it has shown some results, but there are also things that we cannot do because we simply do not have the capacities to do that. Um, yes, uh, so it, the idea really is to take those uh, historic buildings, that valuable housing stock that we have in Chemnitz, um, and support uh, with a focus on the buildings. First stop would be, of course, you've got an owner and how can you support the owner to do something with the building? Uh, on the other hand, which is a large part of what we're doing, is really uh, to facilitate a change of ownership. Uh, to show 
what steps must be taken and so someone can take over the buildings who can who can do something with it um, we are yeah, we sometimes compare it a bit to a carrot and stick approach um, you've got the city who's got the stick who can force uh, uh, owners or other people to do something uh, with a building to some extent only um, but we've got the car carrot we can support and um, uh, and help and talk and communicate um, and see how we can uh, get over certain obstacles um, so here are just some of the results uh, uh, that we had over the past years it only goes until 2018 I, I have to update it at some point um, so we started out with about 100 buildings uh, of which uh, 60 per 61 percent uh, are listed so there are monuments um, in really in uh, 98 of those cases we have had the chance really to get in contact with the owner um, 95 uh, buildings we had uh, we could activate the owner in one way or another um, 42 buildings we published on our website or through real estate websites um, and altogether about 67 of those 100 buildings that we chose at the beginning as our core stock um, have changed ownership um, uh, and in 2018 there were 52 so half of the buildings that were um, either directly in the renovation phase or uh, uh, going towards that and 18 buildings have been uh, completely remodeled and reused by now this uh, uh, this number has uh, increased i think about at the moment we've got about 30 of the buildings that are completely finished and reused uh, by the people okay so far about what uh, uh, what we're doing in chemnitz i just want to give you a brief overview on uh, on our transfer network um, so chemnitz and also Babschiff, we are not alone in with this problem i mean there are hundreds of cities who are facing a somewhat similar situation with a declining population and buildings that have fallen into disrepair um, and so martin sorry you i think there's a loose connection or something it, it, distorting uh, okay the, okay carry on i'll just keep reminding you when this happens sorry okay so i i restart uh, with the slide more or less um so the urbex project that we're uh, combined with those uh, seven cities that are on the map um the program supports and the exchange and learning activities among european cities uh, each of the cities of course brings on its own challenges and situations and so um from from the start we developed um six central topics that we think are crucial when you want to uh, establish uh, an agency like that um, if you want to transfer that idea um, we believe that uh, the agency as we did it in the past years um, is somewhat flexible in how it can uh, in how it works and um, and the approaches it takes um, so uh, each city really has the chance to adapt it according to their needs and their local situation but these uh, the following six topics are really the ones um, that we've found uh, as crucial and those we have also discussed during our previous meetings um, one thing of course it's important really to consider um, what kind of body or institution should take over this task uh, is it something that's taking place inside the uh, city administration or outside of it is it good to have a more neutral player in it or is it helpful really to uh, to settle that within the city administration um, the next point is inventory and monitoring of vacant and derelict buildings and flats um, 
we uh, we found that here in Chemnitz and also in the in our partner cities, um, often there is not really a very clear picture uh, of what really is the problem. How many buildings are empty? What is really the problem with the buildings? Um, and so one central task at the beginning was really to get the clear picture and to uh, analyze the situation. Um, some of our partner cities like the picture you see on the right, which is uh, uh, Constanza in Romania, they did a very good job really in mapping and using GIS uh, to, uh, yeah, to get a picture of what they have. Um, the next one is publication and marketing of vacant and derelict buildings and flats, um, which means how do you get the information across to the right people? Um, uh, here in Chemnitz, for example, we use a lot of uh, online tools or website, but we also use, for example, events. Uh, and depending really on the target groups that you have, uh, you have to focus on and see what channels are the best uh, to move forward. I'm sure in Valpschir has uh, experiences with that as well. Um, the next one is contacting, activating and supporting owners. Um, each city uh, kind of has their own uh, background in, um, uh, in typical owners that, that are present, that are owning those buildings. Um, on the right, you, you just, a, just a brief chart on you've got different uh, kinds of typologies of owners. Some are easy to work with, some are more difficult to work with. Uh, with some, it's easy to get results and with some, it's difficult. Um, so. Uh, really to, to find a strategy and, um, and also understand the problems of certain owners really is a very important prerequisite to, um, yeah, for, for the work of such an agency. Uh, the next one would be identifying, contacting and supporting potential buyers and investors. Um, really, and it's, uh, this is something that each city has to check out what, uh, where are potentials in that. Um, here in Chemnitz, we've got good experience with professional housing developers because many of the buildings are in such a bad shape that it's difficult really for private people or single people to develop that building. So many of the buildings have been developed by real estate uh, developers, professionals. But of course, we're also looking beyond that. We're trying to find people who are uh, from Chemnitz, from the city, or uh, projects um, that go beyond just the plain renovation of buildings so that there is an additional value created uh, for the city by reusing those buildings. Um, last but not least, of course, I cannot go in all these topics in detail. There, there's much more to it. Um, the, the last thing is, of course, uh, to connect and coordinate public and private stakeholders. Uh, this is taking up uh, quite a bit of our time really to, um, uh, to discuss with the different city departments, with, uh, uh, with the different people. And it's important really to um, support that common goal that all of us have. Because if, I, if you're the city, if you're the owner, if you're an investor, usually you do have the common goal that you want to see the building in use again. Yeah. I think uh, I'm not going to talk about the secondary topics that we identified. I'm going over that. Um, what I think is very important at, um, that at the beginning is really uh, to understand and um, see what are the challenges uh, that uh, you in your local situation have. Uh, just from the papers that are right before, um, I think before starting an agency, I think it's really important to discuss what is the, what is the focus, what is the challenges, challenge that you want to address. Um, is it, do you want to focus on the very city center or other historic districts? In Chemnitz, we, it's not the city center, but the other districts. Um, is it more about residential or the commercial units? In Chemnitz, it's mainly uh, about resident, residences. Um, then of course you've got the, uh, 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 the public housing and private dwellings. Um, then uh, 
I think here in Chemnitz, we've got more whole buildings that we're working with, uh, while in Babschiff, it's probably more single flats or uh, to a larger extent than we have here. Um, or what, uh, yeah, really, what is, the, what is the focus? What is the task? And this has to be clarified. These are just some points that I think might be interested, interesting. Um, okay, I hope I gave you some kind of an insight on what we're doing. Of course, I'm here uh, for the question and answer uh, session. Great. Okay, so far. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Martin, that's uh, splendid. So Anna, we'll move to you now to present your bit about your experience in setting up such an agency in Rubnik. So Martin, could you take your screen down, please? Yes, I can. And then Anna will be able to put hers up, I hope. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Okay, I had... Good morning. Uh, I was invited to the meeting as a representative of Rybnik City, but I have to tell you that I don't work in the office. I was employed in, in the office as a moderator, a public moderator, to initiate the process of adapting uh, these uh, claims of agency to Rybnik conditions. Of course, it was associated with the fact that uh, Rybnik took part in Urbact uh, agency, uh, and I was a part of the Urbact uh, group, working group. Um, so why does Rybnik wanted to take part in the project? Uh, mainly because uh, of the development of the city center. Uh, and a lot of people would like to live in Wałbrzych. In Rybnik, we see other trends. Uh, we see the problem of depopulation of Rybnik, um, because mainly it's city center, uh, central districts, actually. Uh, city center, uh, northern district, uh, which consists of uh, usually um, detached houses and uh, one more district. So there is, was a problem with the population, especially uh, city center and northern districts, uh, um, well, lack their uh, inhabitants most quickly. And what uh, while you mentioned before, um, inhabitants of Rybnik uh, move out to uh, outskirts uh, or to other communities um, around Rybnik, but they still work in Rybnik. They uh, take their children to kindergartens to Rybnik. Of course, they want to have great motorways. They want to... Uh, go to theater in Rybnik, to concerts in Rybnik, but they don't want to pay money in Rybnik, and this is the problem. Um, I think this is not only the problem of our city, uh, but others as well. Uh, so there was an idea that, first of all, we will, should encourage people to live in the city centers, so we take them back uh, with the conviction that if we have a host and we have inhabitants, then the city center is alive. If the city center is uh, safe, well taken of, more attractive. And in perspective of the office, it is very important that the city center in Rybnik is representative, uh, is nice, looks pretty, is attractive. One challenge uh, is that the buildings that are owned by the office not to mention the northern district, because the northern district is composed of beautiful villas, um, detached houses, or multi houses, multi flat houses, but the maximum two, three families live in these villas. Um, the problem is that there are several uh, buildings, tenement houses, that belong to the city and they are to be sell, sold. Uh, and the rest of these villas belong, belongs to private owners. And this is the great challenge because we cannot influence uh, the decisions of such owners. We cannot affect them. But 
as I mentioned, uh, that was the, our conviction, that was the idea to take part in the project too. First of all, to think how to bring these people back to the city center and how to encourage private owners of villas and houses to uh, improve the comfort uh, of living in and improve the situation uh, which is currently um, ha is currently happening in the building uh, business. Uh, tenement houses in the city center in Rybnik are not in really bad conditions as you saw in Kamenitz. Um, as uh, they are not so demolished, the, the facades are not so damaged, uh, maybe only we have sa several cases like that, but we, uh, from our perspective we think that are a, a lot of vacant flats. Um, uh, at the bottom, usually of the building, uh, at the ground floor, there is some kind of the service, uh, um, uh, flat, maybe commercial um, flat, and Above, uh, this um, is nothing, vacant uh, flats and, and demolished, not all facades are in good conditions as well. And, uh, the problem appeared how to encourage uh, the owners to change, to make a change that someone actually can live above these shops. Uh, that was my uh, introduction and then maybe uh, I can share the screen. So how did we begin uh, when we took part in Urbact um, and how Rybnik um, initiated it? So as the outside moderator and uh, representative which uh, has a uh, great scope uh, in terms of activity, social activity and civil um, society activation. Um, I was asked uh, to moderate workshops, open workshops for uh, inhabitants of Rybnik. And why um, did we do it? Um, we didn't want to be at first uh, an institution uh, that, uh, you know, we can be asked to do something, we could be asked favors. Uh, very often the mayor, uh, when the mayor is at the meeting, the inhabitants very often um, don't stick to the, um, you know, special plan, but actually complain to the mayor. So that was our um, trick um, to that this is not the person from the city, but from the outside, because such a person from the outside, outside would be more objective. And that's why that was me, I was chosen. And we focused on owners of tenement buildings and uh, we focused on uh, inhabitants of the city center and potential inhabitants of the city center. The meeting was open we um, uh, wanted to uh, reach a bigger group of people, but we also had targeted invitations. Um, we invited also uh, developers from Rybnik uh, to institutions which we knew they might be interested in the meeting. Um, uh, we, um, the developers had capital potential to build in the city center, or maybe they already started some buildings in Rybnik. Uh, so we wanted to also reach owners of buildings because uh, they uh, knew the best real estate in Rybnik. I think this is the spe um, something specific in Poland that in Poland people um, buy flat, we don't rent. This is the specificity of Poland. Of course, we can talk about Warsaw, Krakow, Wrocław, where this renting um, is a bit different because such cities have students, but in Rybnik we don't have a lot of students. People usually settle forever, you know. So usually, so they usually don't rent, but they buy. They want to own, not to rent for life. 
um, so that's why we wanted to invite um, representatives of uh, uh, these real estate agencies they could uh, tell us more about it we invited um, representative of banks and other financial institutions that could share their knowledge with us their expertise with us uh, and that these knowledge could be exchanged between people we um, we invited also representative of different uh, uh, housing agency owners. First of all, we made uh, some tests. So we asked them, why do people don't want to live in the city center? So we needed to know why we have outflow of people from the city center. And the second question was, why do owners of the, the tenement buildings are not willing to um, to renovate the buildings, to reactivate the buildings. What is the great challenge for them? Why they don't do it? And what was the conclusion? Uh, the conclusion was that the inhabitants leave Rybnik because it's too loud, because there are too many people in the city center. Um, that there are too many restaurants uh, and this is too loud for them there is no space uh, green area sorry or safe uh, areas for children in front of tenement buildings uh, because we don't have internal um, yards or internal playgrounds uh, where children can uh, play uh, we don't have parking uh, spaces uh, in the city center that was really really a big issue for many inhabitants um, so the citizens ask how can i park uh, i you know i have a lot of groceries and then i have to walk one kilometers to my flat from the parking so the lack of gardens uh, was also the problem I mentioned that and the open area uh, that can be used not only by citizens but the open area uh, was very problematic because uh, there were a lot of people drinking and eating in restaurants and the owners of the buildings uh, said that they don't investment don't invest in tenement building because they are afraid of tenements um, and the cost is not uh, adequate to the profit they can get uh, to the because they have to maintain the tenement building and this is very expensive and it's not profitable for them what about the, the, there were problems with legal issues also anna anna mm -hmm. i'm sorry anna, uh, sorry i don't mean to interrupt we, could you just very slightly i'm sorry we just You've had 10, 10 minutes already and we need a couple of other slides. I'm sorry. But. Okay, so we will be quicker, I think. And as Martin said, Martin said uh, the big problem for us were also, was also getting to know why we have vacant uh, flats in the city center. Because as I said, when we were walking around, we could see vacant flat. But was it vacant for sure? It was a mystery. Um, because as I said, the majority of building belongs to private owners. So, mm. So that's why we wanted to know why they are vacant and what we realized. The owners didn't want to sell the buildings. They didn't want to rent the buildings. They just, they were just saying, this is my investment. So uh, it's better than in the bank. So we, we tried to start from this, but it's the deeper diagnosis is still ongoing. And we started to uh, act with the local group Urbag, with representatives of the office, with the owners of the tenement building, and with the experts. Um, and we organized open meetings from time to time. We focused on topics, um, for example, how to make the inventory. Uh, we help them with legal issues uh, as well. And we also had challenges because we were thinking how to the 
how to um, set our area. Should we focus only on several streets in the city center, or maybe we should take into account uh, the uh, house and the condition of the house, if they are uh, have historic values or not, if they are in good technical shape or not. Uh, there was the question of inventory then, of te technical problems, and and the reasons why we um, why we should help these buildings the great challenge was the legal um, aspect what i mentioned before uh, we were um, um, we didn't know if this is going to be the agency sh should be in the structure of the office or in the structure of the municipal housing company and then we decided that it's only the pilot um, pilot question uh, pilot uh, agency uh, i was asked to moderate the whole process but so uh, we didn't want uh, people to come to us with expectations, with complaints. We thought that if this is the external uh, institution, uh, then uh, not a part of the office, uh, then we are uh, objective. And it will be uh, easier to, uh, uh, to um, ask what the agency did or not, and it's more transparent. Um, the office in Rybnik has a lot of responsibilities, but we didn't to give them additional tasks and additional responsibility. One more thing, uh, well, the, the uh, housing department in the city deals mostly with municipal houses, with social housing, and this needed, uh, this task needed broader uh, knowledge about financing, about legal issues, architecture, law uh, of architecture. So it was easier, I think, to outsource it to an institution that would combine all those skills or those expertise way kinds of expertise uh, also there were questions about the scope of activities of such agency especially uh, we were particularly afraid uh, that whether whether that will really help people how will this be perceived uh, how um, how much can we help uh, or intrude in the process Let's say. And just one more thing i wanted to mention compared to uh, what is offered by a Chemnitz agency uh, in Poland, our agency has a much limited uh, uh, catalog of flats, let's say, or, 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 or skills. When I visited, uh, when I was on, on the site to visit, uh, a study visit in, in Germany, uh, in Chemnitz, I could see that it's very well organized, both on the state level and on the local government level. For example, you can have a tax exemption if you adjust your uh, fla your, your building to the disabled or to the elderly uh, building. Uh, building a, an elevator, for example. In Poland, we don't have such mechanism. In Poland, uh, such mechanisms uh, in Poland, uh, an investor needs to have cash uh, that will then uh, be invested and bring some really reliefs uh, or, or bring some profits. Uh, in Germany, there is a lot of uh, financial uh, financial help provided, support, let's say, provided uh, or exemptions provided by the government. Uh, what is the level right now, uh, well, situation right now? We are still within a local urban group. Uh, uh, I'm on a maternity leave right now, so I don't, I can't give you a fully updated uh, version of, uh, of, of of the situation. I organize, uh, the, sorry, the person, the coordinator organizes uh, regular meetings uh, and the network is developed. Uh, thanks to his help, to, to this new coordinator help, uh, we managed to describe a pilot scope of the operation of the agency. and. 
we uh, uh, well also a, an external contractor was uh, selected uh, exa exactly an employee of the uh, Silesian University of Technology also the uh, university uh, sorry the uh, econ University of Economy in Katowice was involved so a group a student group uh, is dealing with uh, researching the urbanized area uh, so again, it's difficult for me to give you fully updated uh, activities of the agency uh, as at the beginning of the year, uh, the competition for the, the, the tender was uh, closed and then due to the pandemics, unfortunately, all these activities slowed down. Okay. So I guess if you want to get uh, direct information, contact the municipality of Rybnik or the coordinator directly, Mr. Krajewski, to be more pre precise. Okay, uh, great. Uh, because probably they will be, uh, they will be starting uh, the work again. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Uh, that's great, excellent. Okay, so we're, uh, that was uh, great from all of you. Uh, we're running slightly behind, but if people don't mind spilling over, we can have a discussion for the next half hour or as long as we want here, I think. Um, so uh, let's open it up. Uh, who would like to ask questions, I think, of Anna and Martin? Uh, off you go. Yeah, Kamal, Camille. Thank you for giving me the floor. Uh, to get to, 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 to the specific questions, uh, referring to your, uh, to your presentations uh, of both of our guests, uh, uh, let's, let me start with the organizational issues uh, of, of the agency, creating the agency and its operation and uh, selecting the buildings that the agency would encompass, uh, what Martin mentioned in his presentation particularly. Uh, Martin, you said that uh, also, uh, the lady from Libby as well, um, there was a question that uh, whether such agency should be within, created within the municipality or maybe creating a uh, uh, public company or maybe we should outsource it completely. We know the answer to, to, the, to this question from Rybnik. And uh, how was it in Chemnitz? Uh, uh, so, so why an external consulting company was selected? Why was it so important for you, for, for the municipality of Chemnitz uh, to, for, for the entity to be independent, to be outside of its structures, uh, not some, uh, some, some entity dependent on, uh, on, on, on the municipality or a public owned company. Uh, I'm asking because, uh, well, 10 years ago, something like that, some, something similar functioned in the city. But then, uh, back then, uh, the decision was made that the, uh, let's say, uh, public, uh, sorry, so that, that such housing agency uh, was closed. It was within the city structure, within the municipality then. And the second question uh, to, about the inventory. Uh, Martin, you mentioned that 100 buildings were selected. Were selected. Uh, I wanted to ask what were the criteria for such selection? Uh, because as you said, we need to think what should be the goal, should be as broad as possible, but then superficial, but then maybe really targeted, really narrow, and then uh, deal with these buildings comprehensively. So what were the criteria of selecting 100 buildings exactly? And uh, again, a uh, third question, who is the owner of these buildings? Because you just gave us the information that 67 uh, buildings changed the owner, changed ownership. But who was the owner originally? Did you deal only with the uh, municipal buildings or also with privately owned buildings? And more questions to follow, but not to, not to swarm you <laughs> with those. Okay, I try to uh, answer in brief. 
Um, when it comes to the organizational matters, um, I think there are three words I would, uh, would say there. One is uh, capacity, then expertise, and then flexibility. Um, in terms of capacities, um, the city of Chemnitz didn't really have the capacity to do that themselves. Um, some departments really had their stake in the process, but since the issue of the uh, individual building was so complex, it was difficult for one person from the municipality to deal with the issue. And there was no chance really to establish another post within the administration to take over this task. Um, the second thing is uh, expertise, um, which means that within the city, city administration, you didn't really um, have uh, the, the knowledge to, to some extent, because there are also some, some other issues, uh, real estate development and things like that, um, where expertise from outside the city administration is helpful. Um, our company came in because we uh, have been working with the city of Chemnitz in one, of, uh, uh, in one district in Chemnitz for the past now 30 years uh, in the management of urban renewal grants. Um, so we already had an established working relationship. Um, and so it was a more, and more or less natural thing also to, to apply uh, to that tender that the city of Chemnitz made in 2011. Um, and the third thing is uh, what I would label flexibility, that when you're outside the city administration, you're not um, um, limited uh, by what the city can do. You're, you're a neutral person who can step in between. Uh, in many cases, it's easier to discuss with owners and potential investors um, when, when you're not the city of Chemnitz. Uh, because then you're not uh, uh, you're creating some kind, of, some kind of trust or a better working relationship. Um, but of course, we are always very clear uh, that we are a municipal project. Uh, this is also important because we have to delimit our work from the work of real estate agents. Uh, we really have a, a focus on a part of the real estate market that the market doesn't really cater for. It's market failure, more or less. So these are basically the, uh, the main issues, why it's organized like that. Uh, and it worked rather well. We are in very in constant communication with the city administration. We also have a steering committee um, and people in the city administration that we're directly working with. Um, inventory. Um, we, uh, it was clear from the very beginning that those buildings that are um, from that certain area, like, like what you've seen, tenement buildings with six to eight flats. We've got a huge housing stock of that. Uh, and there are many that are both vacant and in a uh, bad building condition. Uh, so it was very clear to focus on these. Um, but still, um, since they were scattered all over the city, we still we have not touched all of them in the city yet, but we focused on three areas uh, where there was a high density of those buildings. Um, uh, and so we took those three neighborhoods uh, and looked what buildings are there. And more or less accidentally, they added up to about 100 buildings. Uh, it's not very easy to, to, to really count exactly how many buildings there are because we're flexible. Sometimes we're taking over new buildings that are just ar around the edge or that we didn't think about. Or, um, so it's very flexible, but at the beginning we had about 40 plus 30 plus 30 uh, buildings in those focus areas. Um, and in terms of the owner situation, we had a very fascinating mix of very different situations. Um, I think there were at the beginning about 15 or 20 of those 100 buildings that were owned by the public housing company, GGG. Um, at that time, uh, the main focus of that housing company was to get rid of their uh, housing stock that is scattered all over, but really to focus on certain areas. Uh, so 
those buildings that we had in our list were actually for sale and most of them have been sold. Uh, actually, the funny thing is that those buildings that have been sold by the housing company directly without our intervention more or less are now have, some of them have become new problems because the new owners were speculators or uh, other people. Anyway, if, but not all, all cases, of course. Uh, apart from that, uh, the group of owners included a, a large variety of different uh, people. You uh, you had old people who, who who inherited the building, some people who have not even who are not from Chemnitz. Uh, then, of course, you've got um, real estate developers or speculators. Uh, who just bought the building, wanted to do something with it, but never came around to it. Um, yeah. And sometimes you even have uh, people from other countries, which are often uh, a, the biggest problem because to get hold of them and to communicate with them is not that easy. Okay. Um, uh, well, one thing uh, uh, to some owners, it was not possible really to. Uh, to get in contact with, even for the city administration. Um, so some buildings have been sold through the courts, um, uh, through foreclosure procedures, which was about uh, 10 of the buildings, I think. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Camille, you had more questions or from your team? Unmute. Oh, hang on, I'll do it. Bardzo dziękuję. To bardzo rozjaśniło. Thank you very much. It cleared uh, the picture. Uh, but I have a short question to Rybnik. Pani um, Anna, uh, you mentioned it's not uh, true that we don't have problem with the population in Wałbrzych <laughs> because in Wałbrzych we have problem with the populations. Of course, we have great green areas and so on and so forth. But everyone wants to live in Wałbrzych. Well, not actually true. We have problem with the population. And the outflow of uh, people from all oh, the city center and all the uh, districts uh, is our problem as well. But uh, our situation in terms of uh, structure of inhabitants in uh, the city center is that we have the old square market and streets to the city market which are renovated. We have great infrastructure, but we have problem with inhabitants. Why? Uh, these inhabitants are problematic. Um, they have different problems um, with um, alcohol, for example. And you said, Anna, the main problem is uh, the noise in Rybnik, restaurants, the lack of gardens. So that's why inhabitants move out. In Wałbrze, we have problem that in the evenings, uh, the city center is dead. <laughs> Nothing is there empty 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 and we have to actually to encourage this migration of people of inhabitants and we need to take care of these problematic inhabitants to be able to renovate this uh, tenement houses in city center but it is a long-term process so i have a question because in chemnitz uh, uh, the activity is the whole building you you take care of the whole building but my question is can we uh, can this agency work only not not with the building but with only with the flat because we have um, communities housing communities uh, the half of the flats is private the half of the flats is social uh, so public uh, and half uh, um, is with difficult uh, owners or difficult inhabitants it's mixed uh, so we cannot work with the whole building but we can only work with separate flats uh, due to the structure of the building um, 
so we are not able to deal with the building um, it has many owners the building so we were thinking only uh, about working with uh, separate flats so we renovate uh, separate flats uh, here 40 percent of flats don't have bathrooms or toilets uh, 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 we have even problems with um, coal uh, uh, burnt uh, furnaces, uh, which also uh, pollute everything around. So very often these people believe they are old. Uh, and for example, they have 100 square meters. They pay a lot for uh, the heating. They, so they do it with coal. And older people cannot really take a bucket with coal, go up on the third floor. So they would prefer to live in something smaller. So is it possible uh, in the, as a part of this agency to work with separate flats uh, or in like in Hamnitz you have to work with the whole building? I totally understand uh, the question uh, and the problem of citizens and what type of citizens live in the city center. In Rybnik, uh, many years ago, the majority of tenement buildings that belonged to the city uh, uh, and were the local uh, housing um, were actually moved to other uh, districts, uh, which also has consequences. Uh, because uh, let's say we created so-called ghettos outside the city center with these problematic citizens um, we have whole districts with, with beautiful old buildings uh, but with problematic uh, inhabitants. Uh, so we moved the problem away from the city center. Well, in Rybnik, in the city center, we don't have uh, so many public housing like in Wałbrzych. Actually, we don't have uh, them uh, at all in the city center. Uh, we have only private dwellings. As I mentioned, uh, mainly, yeah, these buildings are uh, privately owned. Maybe one or two tenement buildings are still uh, public. We have another problem with such buildings is that the flats are too big as compared to uh, the uh, inhabitants. We are, the city is uh, limited because we have special act uh, that limits us and uh, public housing can be um, given to uh, the inhabitants of special status, low status, are poor. So what is our challenge is uh, talking to the owners of tenement buildings. This is the challenge to talk to private owners. Uh, we don't have problems uh, with what we have uh, in the office. Uh, of course, it is possible to work only with the flats, not with the entire building. But it shouldn't be the uh, transforming these buildings into commercial buildings. We want to keep them uh, as residential buildings, not as commercial buildings. Um, so um, the uh, office in Rybnik took part in this uh, agency uh, to make the city center more attractive, uh, not to create only uh, banks, services, and so on and so forth. And after after six o'clock, these buildings are empty and no one is there. So we didn't want that uh, in Rybnik. Concentrated on not losing the residential uh, flats, uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah. But the, the first inventory is, uh, showed us that the owners of the buildings don't want to sell them because this is their investment and very often uh, if they have only uh, for example a bank on the ground floor uh, they are happy because the bank pays high rent or shop pays high rent and the owner is happy he has money and he doesn't want to have problems with uh, tenements so uh, our challenge was to encourage um, 
uh, that these uh, buildings are actually uh, used for residential, uh, for residents, that they are residential, not only commercial. So the clue is that it isn't the help only to create uh, commercial areas, but to create residential areas. So that's the main aspect. Thank you. That's great. Did you want to add anything more general, Martin? Oh, great. Camille? Do, Camille, do you have another question? Does someone else have a, another question? Uh, ah, Magic. Magic, are you raising your hand? Uh, Tylko dwa wzory podnoszenia ręki. Uh, I didn't know how, if I did it correctly, um, <laughs> but I hope you, well, you noticed, so I was successful, yes. I wanted to refer to what was said uh, and tell you about the uh, being uh, attractiveness of the city center, because this is the challenge. And in Wałbrzych, I, I work with this, uh, so I can share my experience. Uh, criteria of quality, quality is very important. Uh, quality of the um, flats is very important. It uh, very often depends on the strategic aim. Of course, it is great uh, to improve uh, uh, the quality of life of the inhabitants because if they don't have bathrooms and toilets, it's great. Uh, but uh, if we say that the aim is to overcome the, pop the population barriers and attracting new uh, citizens uh, or encourage young people to stay in the city, the quality is a bit broader because it is more expensive and it's not about only uh, the building itself or uh, renovating the toilet, it's about the place uh, because even the place is more decisive than the building and it's difficult to change the place than to change the building. So this is the task of the municipality office. Uh, it's not only about the renovation, uh, but to create conditions for young people, uh, making the whole place, the entire place attractive. Uh, so what I did, uh, for six districts, um, I was asked to, to <laughs> So for six districts uh, that were revitalized in Wabrzych, we created urban concepts based on which we could f make financial analysis. How, uh, how expensive would it be to restore this derailed, dam uh, destroyed districts to make them more attractive? Because it's very important when we talk about residential housing uh, to keep or to encourage others. So uh, I had a chance to work with two districts districts in Wałbrzych, Starzec Gór i Podgórze, and they're a bit different, uh, they're a di bit different because one of them has the tradition of old sanatorium, old, old spa, looks great, they, there is a, a main railway station, this is the part of Wałbrzych, and the second district, one of the most damaged, the Podgórze, very, very degra degraded district. Uh, so different concepts uh, I used uh, to to make these districts attractive, but I made also calculations and the cost of restoring uh, these districts is higher than these degraded ones. So the cost of improving the quality uh, of Podgórze district, which is totally damaged, is lower, relatively lower than maintaining the high uh, attractiveness of uh, um, the city center. Uh, of the districts that are potentially uh, the, the, 
that have greater heritage because uh, with such districts of greater heritage we have uh, higher costs and we need more than one investor in such cases we need more uh, broader intervention of the municipality office we need to have joint uh, contribution and this is the paradox that better districts require higher costs and uh, they need to be taken care of uh, even more they need more resources and in more our activities thank you very much great thanks uh christoph you wanted to come in uh, yes Yes, three quick questions to Chemnitz, one to Rybnik. Uh, in terms of Chemnitz, uh, uh, you mentioned, Martin, you mentioned that the city can force, uh, well, it can be the stick, uh, let's say, uh, you use this comparison. What is the stick uh, that the city can use to motivate private owners uh, to some actions, specific actions? Uh, secondly, technical question the first projects uh, that you started were there uh, investors from cabinets or from the outside because this is interesting for us as a promotional agency should we promote uh, our activities uh, our agency internally or externally and then as far as i know um, your, as far as I understood, uh, your agency only deals with uh, developed plots, right? Because we are dealing also with, in Vaubje company also deals with under uh, undeveloped plots uh, as well. So uh, as it was mentioned, it's easier to sometimes to create a building, to, to, to erect a building on an undeveloped plot than to demolish and then, or, or renovate uh, an, uh, over the existing building. And to question to Rybnik, uh, do you have any tax policy for the city center? Are there any tax exemptions, reliefs that promote the city center among potential investors or uh, potential inhabitants? And do you have any policy of uh, uh, giving or, or, or allocating people to the flats, uh, to the municipal flats? And uh, because we had this idea that maybe we should tie it to, uh, maybe we should tie it to income, uh, personal income. Uh, uh, but but we are thinking of moving away of that. Uh, maybe we uh, also should make it dependent on where do you work. So for example, a person working outside of object would not be given a communal, uh, a, a municipal uh, or communal flat. So do you have these additional mechanisms, additional criteria for uh, giving, uh, giving, giving the flats uh, to people, communal flats to people? Great. Okay, thanks. So let's take it in turn, Martin, then Anna. Uh, okay, thanks. Interesting questions. Uh, the stick, what can we do? Uh, it's actually a somewhat limited uh, what we have in Germany. We found out to the Alpha network that in each country it's a bit different uh, on what's possible. Um, actually, uh, uh, in Germany, there are basically uh, um, only the chance for the city to step in if there is uh, a danger going out to the public. For example, if a building becomes so dilapidated that the city has to take uh, substitute measures uh, and uh, um, and from from this uh, point uh, there are legal procedures that are coming into place that is at some point going towards uh, foreclosure so uh, a forced change of ownership so to say if the owner either cannot pay back what the city had to do with the building or for example if the taxes are not paid at some point uh, there's a, a chance to go into foreclosure but apart from that i think this is a this is the strongest mechanism that the um, the, the city can use um, but apart from that many of the of the things like um, like for example there are options when you've got health issues for example or for example if you're creating a urban redevelopment uh, district you also have other chances to uh, to force the owner to 
to do something with their buildings. Um, but this is usually very difficult because it also takes a lot of formal procedures. It takes a lot of time and it's not really clear what the outcomes will be. Uh, so it's very difficult for cities really uh, uh, to use their stick for those empty and unrenovated buildings. Um, for example, we've got a partner city in, in Riga, in Latvia, uh, and they've got uh, the, the chance, if they see that the building is dilapidating, um, they can significantly increase uh, the, the tax on the building. So they are using that very actively. Um, but sometimes I think you just have to also be a bit creative about the opportunities that, uh, that you have. Um, in terms of investors from inside and outside, um, I, th I think at the beginning, most of the uh, investors that came to Chemnitz were coming from outside of Chemnitz. Um, this, this is a, a complex situation. One thing is that because Chemnitz is not really a rich city, there is not much capital for, uh, of the inhabitants really to, uh, uh, to invest in those buildings, especially in those. Um, uh, and some people are hesitant really to invest in Chemnitz as their own city because they do not really see the economic future in, in a way, or, or they see uh, that uh, large parts of Chemnitz are dilapidating. So uh, those investors from outside came in with a new look at the city. They saw the potentials also of districts where the people from Chemnitz were uh, um, a bit depressed about. Uh, um, and also they brought in new capital. Um, but still, we see also a change that uh, people from Chemnitz are becoming more interested and they see that there is a change possible even in, uh, in difficult uh, situations. Um, so in terms of undeveloped plots, we, uh, we have not worked with those uh, yet. Um, because there are still so many buildings uh, that still need work. So we focus on our core business, but we still have it in mind because when you've got those close building blocks and there are si single gaps in between, it also has potentials uh, really to improve the cityscape to implement something new. Um, but this is still in the future. There's also still not a large market for new buildings. It's more uh, on the existing buildings. Okay, thank you. So, Anna, do you want to pick up uh, your bits, your questions, another, anything else you want to say? Sure. Um, so, about the, the tax policy, um, at this, this moment, uh, the, the only benefit uh, is that if you want to exchange your uh, heating system, I should speak in Polish, sorry. <laughs> in terms of tax policy, the only uh, thing we can do for the owners uh, of buildings is in terms of changing the heating system. So if you present uh, documentation that you're switching from, let's say, coal-based uh, heater to gas or to heat pumps uh, or grid heating district, uh, district heating grid, then you can be exempt from property tax. Uh, but it, it pertains to all inhabitants in all over the city. We used to have also uh, another uh, system about uh, renovating uh, city center buildings, uh, renovating facades usually of city center buildings. A couple of owners used that and uh, oh, they uh, emphasize that fact uh, 
the, 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 they emphasized that this was a good solution for them. Uh, but on the other hand, they clearly stated that the amount of financing they needed to, they needed the amount of costs they needed to bear, especially that uh, very often there were these were uh, um, monuments uh, under the supervision of the conservator, uh, so the costs were higher. So they. Uh, underlined that you know it helped them but on the other hand the exemption uh, the exemption uh, was let, let's say not as good not as, as as high as they would like it to be but still they said that for example this was the fact that convinced them uh, to, to take us to take this step I think uh, this is not uh, valid anymore uh, this this exemption I think was for five years of on property tax. Uh, uh, so, so we consider also right now we are considering whether uh, to get back to such a tool or or not. So if uh, especially for people who are participants of the Arbeck group uh, and they improve they want to improve the state of the building the only doubt that the municip municipality had was that uh, where they could justify the tax exemption when renovating the facade uh, as improving the aesthetics of the building then in terms of uh, renovations inside of the building uh, and then uh, from which the owner would benefit then from renting them for example then lawyers had their doubts uh, city lawyers had their doubts whether such exemption uh, could be uh, in place if that does not improve the external uh, outlook of the building so so that was the the doubt that was raised uh, but still, it, it's being considered by the local government, I guess. In terms of uh, the uh, policy of uh, granting uh, or allocating communal housing, I can't answer that, unfortunately, because I have never been part a part of the municipality. And as I said it before, I am outside of the project due to the maternity leave uh, as well. But I, I know that there is a lot of investments going, uh, especially those that uh, uh, consider pertain to, to, to renovating the facades or um, introducing some new forms of uh, housing, municipal housing. So, but you, you can get that information in the municipality. Uh, uh, but as, as far as I remember, uh, we had a certain uh, tool, as, as you said, that, for example, if you renovate the uh, municipal house on your account, then you get the perpetuate, uh, uh, perpetuated ownership of this. Uh, not not, not uh, regular ownership, but you can leave or stay in that flat uh, forever. And then after after you pass away, it re it's returned to the communal stock. Um, I I can't give you any more details about the policy of allocating municipal housing, but again, I can give you some uh, contact details for people who are responsible for that, and they will definitely be able to answer these questions uh, directly, either by phone or mail. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. So I think if we can um, continue, uh, Camille wants to ask, and if it's all right with Greg and Polina and uh, everyone else, then we'll finish in about 10 minutes, uh, if that's all right, as long as there's questions. But I don't want to stop people when we've got this opportunity. So Camille, you're um, up next. I feel we are, uh, it's the end of the meeting. Uh, so I uh, will only ask uh, uh, from uh, the insight, uh, Martin, uh, in your presentation, you mentioned uh, about one out of six tasks, main activities of the agencies is to be the mediator between the owners, so people selling 
buildings and investors. So people buying buildings who have cash, who are able to invest in the uh, real estate. And the key role of the agency is to connect these parties. And in the background, there's administration, public administration, which gives different uh, decisions. So my question is as follows. Can you show us the example or case uh, in which uh, in, where is the agency in the middle? How does the agency connect the owners, the sellers, and the administration above? Because in the city, uh, in Wałbrzy, we have private uh, agencies, real estate agencies, and someone wants to sell the flat or building, the real agency creates the offer. There are people who want to build or rent the flat, so they go to the real estate agency. So why do we need the public agency because on the market we have private uh, agencies, real estate agencies. Where is this added value of uh, this uh, agency, your agency? So if you can present it on the specific case, I would be happy to hear you. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's an uh, 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 important question really to delimit our work from that of real estate agents. Um, as I said before, we in Chemist, we are focusing on um, a segment of the real estate market uh, which is not functioning. Uh, uh, for many years, there has been hardly any interest really in those buildings. Um, and only where there, there was some interest, of course, there were a few. Uh, few developments. Um, uh, we really focused on those difficult cases where uh, where nothing developed, and especially also those cases uh, where the buildings were really in a very bad shape, or who are were located in uh, in difficult places. Um, I, you you asked about a, a certain case, uh, the building I. I showed on the on the very first slide um, was um, uh, was bought in the 1990s by a real estate developer um, who, for some reason, could not continue uh, because of financial issues and, and things, um, and so they stopped doing anything with the building and continued to uh, degrade uh, uh, bit by bit. Um, and they didn't really have, uh, they were not functioning anymore, this company. Um, and so uh, we actually, by contacting them and asking, what are your plans for the building? Um, there was a, a chance really to reactivate the owner, uh, not to just, uh, just to leave it aside, but really uh, uh, to activate them to, um, um, to put the building on the market. And it took us, I think, four years actually until we found someone who was interested uh, in developing this building. We've been inside the building with, I think, 15 different uh, investors or potential buyers and all left right at the door, more or less. Um, so sometimes it really, really takes time really to fit together the different parts. Uh, yeah, and to uh, really to to show the opportunities that a building like this has. Uh, yeah, I, um, and I think what uh, what is an added value for the city of Chemnitz is that we're trying to find potential investors and buyers who are really serious of doing something with the building. That it's not coming from. Um, uh, from rain into snow, uh, so to say. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, but to find someone who's really capable and interested, and hopefully even interested in creating an additional value for the city. Just ask if you uh, want to know more. <laughs> Okay, so 
A jak ich znajdujecie? To jest How do you find them? How do you find them? This is very interesting because this is what we care about. How do you find real investors? Do you have a mysterious recipe? How to find them? Uh, do you have the uh, wallet of invest portfolio of investors uh, associated with your activity? Do you have a portfolio uh, or do you build it uh, from the beginning? You build this uh, portfolio. Um, and you, uh, um, you, you question them, you survey them, uh, and you analyze their deep needs and their plans. So how do you do it? Yeah, we more or less built up uh, this list of potential investors from scratch. Um, there were a few people uh, we knew from before or through other channels, but mainly um, it was through the publication of this of a certain building or several buildings um, uh, we either publish the building on our website which also explains on what we're doing um, but we also published some of those buildings in certain selected cases where this is feasible um, on re professional real estate websites so this created some interest uh, and bit by bit um, uh, the agency uh, uh, has become more known by the, uh, by the people in the real estate market by the people in Chemnitz uh, and also by Google um, so bit by bit we uh, 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 we increased uh, the number um, and what we're trying to do is not not just if uh, the first who comes is served first to a certain degree it is like that of course um, but we're trying to get in contact we're trying to talk directly to the people we invite them to a place we invite them to the building and we try to um, get a feeling of what kind of a person is that is it um, is it a company that we really want to have in Chemnitz or is it just another speculator uh, that uh, we would rather like to have out. Uh, so it's more or less uh, stepping forward bit by bit. We also had to learn that. We didn't have this, uh, have an idea of that when we started in 2011. So uh, yeah, learning and filtering more or less. Good. Okay, thank you. We're going to have to stop there now but that's been an excellent discussion excellent presentations i'm grateful to everyone uh, of course i will circulate the uh details of everyone and either maternity leave your replacement we will give the contact details for but we can copy you in uh martin is there he has many other cities with similar experiences that he could put you in contact with as well um, so uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much indeed. I hope this leads to further contacts and I hope uh, everyone's found it useful. I thought it was excellent. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you very much.